Okay, we're going to try going live here. I'm uh, still working on the uh, picture I started yesterday. And I'm trying to work with mixed media. So today I'm using some of the um, watercolor pens. I love these. Though they don't have the glitter, they do have some great colors and by using hang on by using this pen which is just filled with regular water um, you can change the color by lightening it by adding water which is how I got the lighter brown and darker brown for the little like rocks at the base here and the sand and uh, so that came out really cool I like how that worked um, I'm learning I'm experimenting and learning you can mix colors with these by brushing two tips together so that you get a combination of color. And I think this is like seaweed here. So I'm doing it in shades of green. Every time I've seen seaweed, it's kind of been Or seagrass. It's been a combination of kind of an olivey green with a brighter green. So that's why I'm working with this olive color first. Okay, now we're going to try and combine. But I'm going to use a I bought a pad of um, art paper for using for testing. So, especially when I'm doing things like this, I want to see how it comes out before I. This is the olive as it is, and this is green as it is. I kind of like that. It um, definitely changes it a little bit. From the green pen, it's a brighter green olive. And from the olive pen, it's olive with a hint of green. Oh. No, I like it better with the olive first 
and the green over the top. Okay. So, let's do it this way. Olive first. And then we're going to go over it with the bright green. Okay. <laughs> I was watching an old Bob Ross video today. And I don't think there's any relation. I think he was of the... Jewish Ross descent, whereas uh, ours was English and, well, German. Um, actually, the Ross from my family is Italian from my dad's family. Um, his father came from, I believe, Agropoli. Italy, and um, when they got to Ellis Island, the uh, the agents who uh, checked them in said to him, "You know, you're Ross." Said to his brother, "You're Rossy." So, and they settled in two different areas of New York. So, um, they, uh, the Rossi part of the family is in the Niagara Falls region. And the Ross part of the family went to um, Rochester and Sodus Point, Sodus area. So, my dad grew up in Sodus. He had, uh, well, there were seven kids total. So, it was five brothers and two sisters. And they spoke German and um, English. They never learned Italian. He didn't even know he was part Italian. Until he was grown, it was um, later in life his father admitted that he was actually Italian. So, Dad didn't even know he had Italian heritage until then. And his father, <laughs> Grandpa Ross, um, was the... Uh, northern Italian with red hair and um, he looked like Jimmy Durante. Every time we went to visit I kept waiting for him to go ha cha cha. He never did but I kept waiting. I liked Jimmy Durante. I grew up um, watching old movies on TV because um, I was always homesick with um, uh, asthma and tonsillitis and whatever else that you know struck me so I didn't um, I didn't go out and play as much as the other kids, you know. I I stayed in and dealt with the asthma and stuff. So, um, I'm going to make this one a brighter green. I'm going to do this in two tones of bright green. I've got a really nice darker...
Yeah, there we go. Um, now what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I, I uh, was born with asthma, so health issues were just, you know, part of growing up for me. It was about nine or ten. We'd moved to Florida, and all of a sudden, I was not sick as much because the air was healthier for me in St. Pete. And um, so I uh, I wasn't as sick and I um, was able to eat more often and uh, <laughs> I was able to, um, I was sick less and all of a sudden I went from being this pathetically underweight skinny kid who was sick all the time to a not so underweight uh, definitely not skinny kid who um, was still trying to power eat like I uh, was trying to store up for bad times, bad weather or whatever. And so um, my freshman year of high school, I suddenly realized instead of being five, six, and, um, you know, underweight, I was five, six, and wearing a size 14. Where did that come from, I thought. And that was the year we got the horse, and I rode all summer, and I came back to school the next fall, and I was 112 pounds, and um, I'd cut my hair off. It had been long, and I got it cut short because, you know, riding, and you wanted to be able to <laughs> take care of it easier and stuff. It was the first time I really went with a short style that I wanted, not something my mom had picked for me. And uh, lo and behold, <laughs> here comes this skinny kid into school. And uh, the fellow that I had dated briefly freshman year walked past me three days in a row before he finally recognized me. He went by and he's like, Anna? Anna Ross? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> About time you recognize me. <laughs> but um, that was way back when. Okay, now we've got a, some color going here. And this is where the fun comes in. Because the gel pens have glitter. And I can go back and just add a little here and there. Kind of fill in blanks. And take it from pretty to give it pizzazz. <laughs> um, I mean, you look at this, you can see that it's it's got a fanciful, not natural colors and stuff for the fish and, and, and they're glittery too. So, and I mean, what undersea uh, scheme has flowers that you normally see up in the sun. 
So, <laughs> um, and we even have an olive in, it's not the glitter though, it's, yeah, it's in the um, metallics, here it is, it's sunflower yellow, but it really is kind of an olivey. will add a little sheen that wasn't there before. I really love I kind of resisted at first doing these. I thought, you know, what am I? Nine years old? But uh, I was feeling kind of blue the other day, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to play with this a little bit, see how I like it. The next thing I know, I've done like five projects, and I'm like, hmm. Why was I resisting this so long? Because it's it's actually a lot of fun. I'm going to color this little piece in with the darker brown because this is the glitter right here. giving the stones a little extra So these are the gel pens from Color It. Um, they finally have come out with watercolor pens. I cannot wait to get my set. Um, I've already ordered it. I'm reading a series of books. Um, I think the author's name is Sandy Scott. I'm not positive. Uh, no, I take that back. It's Bailey Cates uh, who wrote the books. And um, hang on. <laughs> um. I bargain your petting. Um, Stella St. Clair, Bark Up and Smell the Coffee is book two. And um, she has a business training dogs for um, not just dog shows, but doing the, the, the trials where they do obstacle courses and stuff. And um, Bailey Cates is right in the ones that I'm reading right now. That's what it is. Um, anyway, uh, she has a three-legged chihuahua that runs the obstacle course. And... Uh, I just, I got a kick out of that. I always wanted to do that. When Uno was younger, I really wish I could have because he would have been great. He used to chase um, 
frisbees and stuff. But um, he's gotten older. I mean, you know, Uno is Uno's my old man now. He's uh, ten and a half. He's going to be eleven in November. And uh, he's not running after things much anymore. He still likes to play with his moose. But otherwise, he likes to eat, sleep, and go for long walks. Um, but he's not chasing balls and running marathons. He's definitely not like Rockstar, who loves to dive in the pool and um, get into things. Rockstar's a character and a half. That's one of the dogs that I'm dog-sitting. He's the one that I post videos of uh, chasing the um, I guess they're like decoy, they're training toys that uh, teach them to fetch and retrieve uh, ducks or whatever. And yeah, he would be a dog that's used for duck hunting. So, um, anyway, he, uh, he loves to dive in the pool. And I've done a few Facebook videos with him just going to town. He really loves chasing and I toss it in and he leaps in and retrieves whatever I've tossed in and gets out, shakes off and brings it to me. And he's a character. He's a lot of fun. He's a good dog. So, as you can see, I'm kind of doing a rough in with the pen here. Um, I'm going to go over with a little bit of the watercolor, which is a slightly lighter brown, to give it kind of that sandstone look, which I would think that these underwater, I'm kind of thinking this is like a cave, so these are like, um, okay, I always got this wrong in my memory. Stalactites and stalagmites, one hangs down and one points up. And I never can remember which is which. I think it's stalactites that hang down and stalagmites point up, but you know, I could be wrong. So, um, I, anyway, that's what these are supposed to be. ones that hang down. I love going to caves um, that have, you know, uh, tours that they take through them, like Ruby Falls in, in um, Lookout Ridge. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Border of Tennessee and, and Georgia. Um, and they have a rock formation that um, it looks like ribbons of bacon. And then they have some that are um, usually in a, a little water pool where, where drips hang come down. They'll have what they call the eggs. So the formation is called bacon and eggs. And... Uh, I, I get a kick out of that. That's it. Ruby Falls. Um, 
I've been there probably, oh, eight or nine times over the years. It's one of my favorites. And I've been to the one in um, Tennessee near Gatlinburg. It's Sevierville, English Mountain. Uh, the caves are called Forbidden Caverns. And right near them, in fact, like a quarter of a mile down the road from them, there's this cute little place called the English Mountain Trout Farm. And it says on the sign, English Mountain Trout Farm. You hook them, we cook them. And uh, it's as ponds that are fed from the stream coming out of the mountain. They've diverted some of the water and it fills these little man-made ponds and they have trout and catfish in them. And uh, so you can you can rent a fishing pole and uh, catch some fish and then uh, they'll cook them up for you. They'll fillet them and cook them and it's really, really good. I've been there more times than I. And I could go back a million more. Um, the guy who owns it's just a sweetheart and a half, and his wife is real nice too. And uh, when they're not working, they're there at um, their house in Mechanicsville, Virginia. So. They're a really nice couple. Well, I'm, I'm winding down. I had uh, a bad case of the restless. Well, I, I drove Fox to his, his appointments today. And I am, I love to drive I hate driving on the um, bypass roads, the, the toll roads, especially right now uh, because there's whole sections of the road that's being worked on and because of it, it's just a real pain in the hoo-ha. And, uh, yes, that's a technical term, a pain in the hoo-ha. And, um, it's like you're cruising along and all of a sudden you're, go you're screeching to a halt and having to drive it, you know, 10 miles per hour with frequent stops for, like, a five-mile stretch of the highway. And that's just really annoying. I just don't have the patience for that. And people are rude and, and don't, uh, there's frequent accidents along there, so I'm just praying that I'm never one of them because I don't need to be in another accident. Um, but they do happen, you know. But I came home after picking them up. I'm in Kissimmee, kind of almost to St. Cloud. And where his vet is, that the PT is being done, is way up in Winter Garden, which is kind of north and west of Disney. So it's not a short drive. It's it's kind of a long haul, and um, it's like 33 miles, and most of it's on this bypass road. And right as I get get there, morning and afternoon, school's going in or school's letting out, one of the two. But it's like the school's just a couple blocks from the the vet, so. There's no avoiding it. You have to go that way. It's just there. And uh, so 
uh, I've had to deal with that um, traffic jam that is, you know, school traffic every time I go up there. So, um, needless to say, I get home, I'm a little stressed out. The crazy thing is, I really do love driving. And Fox is such a sweet dog. He's so much fun to work with. Um, I can't wait to see him once he's, you know, feeling better and, and the hobbles are off and he's able to get around and be, you know, the wild and crazy dog that he really wants to be. He's a working dog and, and he's not, he's being forced to, um, be restrained, you know, um, because he injured the, the tendons, he ripped them away in his shoulder. And so that he's having to, they did a, um, instead of major surgery, they, they injected his shoulder with stem cells, which were harvested from, you know, elsewhere on his body. And so they're just waiting for the, the stem cells to repair this muscle tear, tendons tear. And so he's having to be kept in um, a small area and can't leap, jump, climb, do all the things that a Belgian Malinois wants to do. And it's driving the poor boy crazy. So, he's, um, anxious to get out and run around and do more. And they finally gave us the go-ahead to start walking him for limited periods of time on a flat surface. So, but it's, you know, more than he's been able to do for quite a while. So, I know he's going to love that. Okay, this is the one that's the watercolor. I'm wanting this sand color. Um, for down here. It's almost like a, a nude um, a flesh tone, but it'll work well for sand. And this is a watercolor pencil. So, draw with it. And then go over it with the water brush and it blends Like I said, I'm learning all kinds of techniques with this. I'd love to take um, some classes and learn a little bit more about freehand drawing. Um, I started to take classes from a neighbor when I was a little girl. He was a very talented artist, Mr. Carroll. Or no, Mr. His name was Carol Andrew. No. Yeah, it was Mr. Carol. Um, 
Carol Andrews was the music teacher in grade school and an organist at our church. Um, it's St. Uh, John's on the beach. Uh, his daughter Beth was in my class and one of my friends. Anyway, um, I started learning from this neighbor, but he got, he was older. I mean, he was a much older man. Um, he was like 88 or something. And uh, his wife was, she was a character. Um, she had this old beagle called Mr. Jenkins. And she did more for Mr. Jenkins than she did for herself or her husband. So she would cook for the dog. She wouldn't cook for her husband. <laughs> she was a character. But anyway, uh, I think he had a stroke or something. We, we lost him. But he was trying to teach me how to draw. He said I had some natural talent. I was about, again, eight or nine. And drawing was something I could do. It was quiet. I could do it at home without, you know, getting overexcited or doing too much. And, uh, he was a nice man, but I didn't. I didn't really have anybody to teach me after that. Mom was not enthused because art wasn't what she saw as a viable money-making kind of uh, job. She wanted me to take uh, typing classes and be a secretary because that's what she was. Well, she was a, actually a research assistant, but... At um, Kodak, that's how she and Dad met. Because Dad was an engineer for Tennessee Eastman Kodak. And she worked next plant over from him and with a researcher. And um, so they... Uh, They met at a company picnic, and the rest is history, as the saying goes. So, Gotta be careful because the green here is also a watercolor, so some of the water can streak it into what I'm doing. There we go. A little more done today. As you can see, you can see where the silver and the gold is. And um can you see the glitter in the fish? Yeah, there you go. At that angle you can see the fish are glittery. This is watercolor. I'm going to go over it with some of the purple um, glitter pens to get a little more color into it. Now, there's my brown. There's my brown. I was going to I 
watercolor is a little lighter than both of the others. So. If you can hear that noise, we have a um, the water for the house is a well system, and she has it set up to water her gardens at night. So <laughs> I listen to the well pumping water because they're right outside the little guest house room here that I'm in. All right. So, you can see we've got our stalactites hanging down, we've got our water bubbles coming up from the fish. Sand down here at the bottom. I'm going to figure out what to do for the rocks down here yet. But, little by little, it's coming together. I like doing the whole mixed media thing though. It um, adds depth. So I'm going to stop here. I hope you all have had a wonderful evening. And um, this is my journaling through color. Um, like I said yesterday, some people express themselves by writing, some write poems, some write, you know, just their daily routine down in a journal, their thoughts. Um, I've always wanted to work with color. And if it's not beading, making jewelry, um, or sculpting, which I haven't been able to do because I just haven't been able to afford the supplies. And um, some of this was, uh, um, you know, uh, just pay shipping to tr test it out. So I thought, you know, what the heck, uh, something different. And I'm really, really enjoying it. So... I thought I would share. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.